Hi guys, and welcome to the Bookish Stitcher podcast. My name is Jeanette. I am Bookish Stitcher on Instagram and Ravelry. So how are you guys today? I'm good. I'm going to start off today with what I finished. So last week I was doing a Christmas present for my best friend's daughter, and I finished it, except for the end. But it's a little hat made out of um, scrap yarn. And I didn't follow any pattern. I just made up my own as I went. And that's, so that's done. And I will uh, show you my works in progress. These, oh, I guess this is kind of like a hoe. So half finished object. So one sock is done. Um, this is for, oops, sorry, the sun is setting. It's kind of, okay. Uh, this is for one of my really good mom friends. I'm making them all uh, socks for Christmas. And this is um, Desert Vista Dye Works in the German chocolate colorway. Uh, and the one sock is done. It has a fish lips kiss heel, which I love because I can just, I've memorized it now. So I just do that on all socks. And I started the second one this week. And I turned the heel just today. So it's going along really fast. I hope to have these done next week. There's the ball. I uh, balled it up. It doesn't come like this, but uh, I like it to be balled. So it's that. My next work in progress I showed you guys last week, too. It's the um, Snowbird uh, jacket cardigan thing uh, from Heidi Kermeyer. And I am knitting it up in Knit Picks City Tweed, the DK. And, what? Oh, sorry. Let's see. That's pretty accurate color-wise. It's called the Enchanted Color. And um, it's really soft and really pretty. I'm knitting it on size 5 needles, and last week I had just done these collar parts, but this week I've attached them and I'm just knitting that part up, so I'm enjoying that. And something new this week that I cast on um, is going in line with my uh, Christmas present a weekend, because I have a lot of Christmas presents to do, like I said last time. This is a hat for my best friend's husband. They get a lot of hand gifts. But um, this pattern is, let's see it, the Starving Artist, I believe, or Starving Musician. It's uh, by Laura Linneman. The pattern calls for a very heavier weight yarn than this. I'm using worsted, but this is what I had and this is what I wanted to use and I thought that the pattern would break up this yarn well. And so that's what I picked. I looked on Ravelry for what different people had done, and somebody said that they'd cast on 99 stitches instead for the worsted weight. So I did 99 stitches on size 7. And I think it's doing a really, the pattern's doing a really good job of not pooling with the yarn. And this yarn is storied yarns in a, a Doctor Who colorway, another Doctor Who colorway. And, um, it's it's really squishy and I like knitting with it. It's something I've had in my stash for a little bit, so I thought I'd knit it up uh, for a Christmas present. There's that. And then, okay, so I think the first time I podcasted, I showed you guys my trindle that I'd gotten and uh, talked about that and how I was really liking that. So I just decided, why not just jump in? I, I'll just, I'm going to, I want to try a wheel. I want to learn to spin on a wheel. So I called up my local yarn store, a uh, Yarnivore, and got a thing to, and I just got back from it a little while ago, a couple hour uh, lesson today, and I'm in love. <laughs> so I brought this with me. They said to bring something that was pretty easy to spin, so I, using my SSK uh, coupon codes from when I went, I got this. It's a uh, Lone Star Arts in the Banshee colorway. And I was really surprised when this came in the mail because this is actually a very local dyer to me. Like, on the address, for the shipping address, I could drive to her house just minutes away. I had no idea. But that's really cool. I'll have to see if I, if I actually know her. It's kind of one of those things that you, like, hang out with people in Knit Nine and things, and you don't even have any idea that they're actually a dyer because you're just talking and hanging about, about stuff. And some people are really into self-promoting themselves, and some aren't. So... Uh, I have a friend that designs shawls, 
and uh, she was in the Harry Potter Knits magazine. I didn't know for a really long time that she was like this famous shawl designer because she's really not into like talking about herself. But anyways, here's that. And I brought that to the yarn store and um, started spinning with that. And I, I'm thinking of getting a ladybug, but the kind that they had at the store was, it's called like, it's an Ashford, but it's called like a Sleeping Beauty Wheel. And it's a single treadle. And uh, so that's what I was learning on. And I loved it. And it, it also helped that my instructor was so sweet and nice, and she's a really good friend that I've known ever since I first started knitting. And um, she was very complimentary of me. <laughs> uh, my, I always had heard that your first spinning on a wheel is going to look like crap. Mine was all even, very fingering weight singles, and it just, it was so easy. I, I love it. I, I, she was like, you're a natural, and I was like, guys, I like this. I'm going to keep going, and um, so, of course, I had to rent the wheel, because they had it to where you can rent it for a little while, so I'm renting it for two weeks. And so what I'm going to do is uh, finish spinning this up this week, and then I arranged for another private lesson next weekend to learn how to ply. And then I'm going to keep it for another week after that and do some more, because I've been buying braids of fiber, but I need to start spinning them up. And I'm so excited, you guys, to knit with this. Like, I just, you know when you do something and you just love it automatically? That's what spinning on the wheel was like. I just... I love it. I'm still going to use my trindle. My husband was, well, what are you doing with this trindle now? Well, I'm still going to use it. But I, I love this so much. And so while I was at the yarn store, you have to buy something else, right? <laughs> okay. So I, I've been knitting all these Christmas presents, and my little adorable two-year-old daughter is kind of thinking, this is for me, right? No, this is for somebody else, and she she wants all the things. So I realized I haven't, I've been a bad mom, and I haven't really knit her a lot, because kids that grow stuff so fast, and that's my excuse. But I decided that that needs to stop being an excuse. I need to find patterns that can grow with her a little bit, or just do it anyways, because I love knitting, and she loves knitwear, so why not just knit for her more? So this is what I got at the yarn store. I got a uh, baby cash merino, Debbie Bliss, in the, it's just a number color, right, the pink, to make the Alana Dacos uh, spring garden tea, I think it's called, for a little girl. I'm going to make that sometime. And then I have this book of, like, knitted kids things, and I was decided that I was going to knit my daughter a hooded cloak, because that can grow with her. I can make it really long, and she can have that for, like, three or four years. So I got three skeins of Barocco Vintage, and this gorgeous, it's just showing up as purple, but there are like flecks of blue and brown, and it's so pretty. And it's pretty soft, and it's machine washable, which is good for a toddler. So I got this to do that, and hopefully I'll start on that soon. And then lastly, I had a friend, one of my mom friends, was saying that she would not wear hand-knit socks. She doesn't like socks. But she said she would wear some kind of um, slippers, some little slippers that she could just put on when she needed to run out and get something. So I was walking around the yarn store, and I saw this. Coffee beans. And anything with coffee in the name has to be good, right? Because coffee is amazing. And um, this is really pretty. It has flecks of, like, blue and pink and different browns. And it's 75% acrylic, 25% wool. So I thought this will be good for like some seamless Salomas, the pattern by Megan Williams. Hopefully, somebody tell me, eh, I don't know, if that will wear holes in it. That's the only thing I'm worried about uh, is holes being worn in the thing after I knit it and spend all that time. So that is everything I got at the yarn store, guys. I know I said I was going to show you Miss ba my Miss Babs haul from SSK this week, but that would be a lot to show you that. And then this. So that's, that's all that the enabling you get this week. Next week I'll show you something else. Now on to the books part of the podcast. I thought I'd talk a little bit this week about one of the books that I'm reading. It's, I'm currently halfway through with it. It's called Bone Shaker by Sherry Priest. And it's part of a 
There you go. Oh, glare. Oops, sorry, this is not. And you can see my backyard. <laughs> okay. Anyways, it's not. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, so over there. It's a really cool cover, and as you can probably kind of tell, it's steampunk. And I've been trying a lot of different steampunk, and a lot of it I haven't liked, but I'm actually liking this one the more I get into it. It's, it's kind of crazy. There's zombies, there's, you know, machines that have brought up this poisonous gas that is destroying the world and making zombies and all kinds of crazy stuff. So the basic idea behind the book is, oh man, this is one of those books that trying to explain it could be endless. It, it's just a, this guy built this machine and dug up things trying to steal money from a bank and it let out this poison gas which has gone down to the city and anybody who breathes it turns into a zombie and so they shut off the city and everybody left but there are always that small pocket of people that stay right so anyways there's this legend around this guy who went back into the poisonous gas to let out the people in the jail because the jailers just left them there all to die. So this guy went back in to go save them. So there's this legend. And so this young boy goes into the city to find out more about his past heritage because his grandfather was the one that went to save the prisoners. And he goes in and his mom is panicking because her son is now in the city that has been walled off with zombies. He goes in through like water pipes. And so she goes in there to try to find him and bring him back out. And it's just all kinds of craziness and zombies chasing them and bad guys in the city and good guys and gun shooting and and I think it, it takes place in fictional Seattle but I'm about halfway through with that right now and it's actually in a series it's called the clockwork collection I think by Sherry Priest but it's really good and I have the other one so I intend on reading them but uh, I am looking forward to finishing that up I've got so many books I'm reading right now that I need to kind of finish some, just kind of like I've got so many projects on the needles that I need to finish some of those. But um, that's all I have for you guys this week. Uh, I hope you enjoy the show. And hopefully next week I will have some singles on the bottle, or plied, because it'll be Sunday, yeah. Hopefully I'll have some plied yarn, and it'll be great and squishy. I actually posted a picture of Instagram on Instagram earlier. Because I took the wheel home, and we, the lady from the store helped me buckle it into my passenger seat. It's like, this is the oddest companion I've ever had in my passenger seat. But uh, it was just really fun. I got some weird looks driving home with this wheel. But um, I'm excited to see how that new adventure in my fiber life goes, and I'll keep you guys posted on that. I hope you guys have an awesome week, and that you get lots of time to do the things you love. Okay, bye, guys.